I was our privilege uh, and honour really today to have Alec Mateer joining us and uh, we've just asked him whether he might be willing to answer a few questions and uh, I'm very grateful to him for uh, agreeing to that. Alec, thank you for uh, joining us. Well, the answer to that is thank you for having me, <laughs> which is much more important. Alec, you uh, are probably most uh, known for your work on Isaiah. Mm. Um, how did you first begin to fall in love with the book of Isaiah? Was it a deliberate choice? Was it something that, that um, came just uh, as studying and you really then wanted to focus on that? Well, it happened more or less by accident, really. I, I was uh, on the staff at what was then Clifton Theological College, and I, I was teaching the Old Testament. And I, in the course of teaching Isaiah, I got the beginning of a glimmering. I was as far back as you could get. The beginning of a glimmering of the way the whole book hung, uh, hung together. Okay. And I went to um, an Old Testament group at, at Cambridge. And she, do you remember the name of G.T. Manley? Down before down your time, yes. <laughs> uh, he he was big in 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 the IVP in those days, and and G T Manley said, "Would I contribute a commentary to the Tyndale series?" And 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 like a fool, instead of saying Obadiah, I said Isaiah, <laughs> because I had this beginning of a glimmering. Okay, and that's what started it, and 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 uh, that's ages, ages and ages it must be. It must now be 50 or 60 years ago. And how, from those early days of studying to now, would you say that your understanding of the book, of course it's developed, but has it changed significantly or is there just a deeper understanding? Oh, it's just deepened. It hasn't changed. I've, I've, I've always held that there is one Isaiah. And, and as I say, I had that at that beginning of a glimmering of how the whole book reflected the one author. Mm. And, and, and then over the years that's developed. And was writing something that you wanted to, to do or was it a, a case of, well, I was asked and it, it began from there? It was a case of pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, Ronald Inchley, whose name you may remember, he was, he was the big shot at the IVP. In fact, he was pretty well the only shot, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <clears throat> And uh, and he was a great he was a great one for pressing people to write books, mm -hmm. and and uh, and my first attempt was a, a book on Philippians. Has it become something that you've enjoyed, or is yes. it still a bit of a, a pressure no. from? <laughs> well, I'm such a lazy hound that any sort of work is a bit of a pressure. <laughs> But uh, but no, it's it's uh, it's something I found great joy in. Mm. Yes, I have. Now you've um, been involved in lots of other writing projects. Um, mm. Probably uh, most well known as um, the series editor for the Old Testament section of the BST. Mm. How did you approach um, that series? In that it's a it's a wide series across across all all the books to have a, a knowledge and depth of understanding. How did you approach the editing of, of that series? As a, as a, as a great interferer. <laughs> I, I was, a, I was a, an interfering editor, and I'm amazed that people put up with me so patiently. But I, I, I did believe that if I was the editor, I had a hand w w without writing their books for them. That's always the danger. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to had to be careful when to stop, but I did interfere, interfere a lot. Are you a perfectionist? I think I possibly am, yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Now tell us about um, your latest book, which we have here, Psalms by the Day. Where did that come from? Was that a pressure? Was it a love for the book? Was it Where, where, where did that book come from? Well, no, it started with Isaiah by the Day. Yeah. Um, I, I felt that I wanted to do uh, something that really helped people to read Isaiah and, and to look upon it as a coherent book mm -hmm. with a beginning, a middle and an end and a structure. And, and that 
gave rise to Isaiah by the day. And, and then that seemed to me to be um, a, a practical formula. In fact, tell you the truth, I'm a bit surprised that Christian Focus hasn't launched a series. Maybe you could keep writing for them. And... Oh, not me, no. no. <laughs> and, and, and then I thought, well, the only, the, only, the only other book that I think I know enough about to do a by the day is Psalms. And, uh, and my daughter pestered me, what are you going to do next? And I, I, I gave my standard answer, I'm going to do what I'm good at, absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you know you'll never do that. Get, get ahead and do something. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's, I thought, well, I'll have a go at Psalms. Yeah. Well, we're grateful for her pressure because um, we, yeah, it's um, it's a great. Do you think it's any good? Well, we certainly like it. So um, yeah, yeah. so that, there's one customer at least. But um, let me ask you: um, you have influenced many people in your writings, and that with books like this is is reaching a new audience. But who influenced you in in the books that you read, the the preaching you heard? Um, yes. Well, as far as preaching is concerned. The major influence was a man named Charles Strong, who was the assistant minister at our church in Dublin, mm -hmm. what, what in Anglican terms we call a curate. Okay. He was our curate. And it was he really who introduced me to the whole practice of Bible analysis. Mm -hmm. and, and that seemed to me then, and it still seems to me, to be the best way into discovering what uh, any book of the Bible, any chapter of the Bible, any verse of the Bible is all about. How does it hang together? And just on that, with that I know it's a, it could be a very big topic, but how do you go about that? I had a sneak peek in your Bible earlier and it's colour coded and you, you scribble around it. How do you go about that um, analysis like that? Reading and reading and reading over and over again. Mm. And, and <clears throat> Uh, and and noting where noting where the subject changes mm. and saying why does it go from that topic to this topic and how do they belong together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and your color coding what give us an insight into oh, that, no, that uh, uh, I, I in this bible i use red mm -hmm. to mark um, the structure mm -hmm. and i use blue to mark verses i like okay it's just it's as, it's as good simple as that. Now, uh, you mentioned a preacher. What about books? Were there any particular books or authors that, that stood mm -hmm. out and were informative for you in your Christian life? In more recent years, David Gooding. Mm -hmm. I think he's a master Bible analyzer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wish he were better known. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he, he, he is a major influence. Mm -hmm. no, but otherwise, gen general reading of you know, the standard evangelical texts going right back. Last couple of questions, if I may. You um, have done another couple of uh, devotions in the um, 10 publishing series of Undated Devotions. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Uh, well, I've done ex Exodus and Deuteronomy. And uh, you've, 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 you've kindly agreed to published them both and I think Exodus is on its way it is, yeah. and, and, and I have the editor's questions about Deuteronomy which I haven't looked at yet. Um, uh, again I chose them because they were books that I had done a, a good deal of work on mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I, felt I, I felt I had sufficient material in hand. I, I, I'm really really too old to, to tackle um, a fresh research project mm -hmm. and and I, I I can only really tackle things that I've in some measure broken the back of already yeah. and I, I, I felt I could do that with Exodus and Deuteronomy whether I was right or wrong is another matter but mm -hmm. that's what I felt. You in these books these undated devotions the Isaiah and the Psalms and also your commentaries you're helping people study the Bible for themselves mm. each day. How would you, particularly for a, a younger audience, go about um, 
underlining the importance of daily Bible reading, daily Bible study. I don't know. I don't, a lot depends on the person you're talking to, of course. I think. I, I, I just don't know how I would, how I would do that. Uh, I, I see. I, I I feel I've had a very fortunate life. In my first seven years, I was in the care of my grandma. Now, don't get the wrong idea. She was a very, very simple old lady with a very, very elementary education. If if you ask grandma, are you a fundamentalist, she, she, she wouldn't have the least idea what you meant. But she was a great lover of the Bible. Mm. And for her education, and her general background, she had a phenomenal knowledge of the Bible. Mm. So that for my first seven years, I was subjected <laughs> in the most loving way to all that. Mm. So that I can look back and I can honestly say, I cannot remember a time when I didn't love the Bible mm. and consider it to be the Word of God. Mm. Yeah. Now, not, not, in, not in any technical sense, but in the most simple-minded sense, imbibed from grandma. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that imbibing was so strong that when I went to university and, and, and came face to face with sort of standard 1930s liberalism, it just, it just bounced off me. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it wasn't that I could answer it. It was simply that it didn't register. I knew it must be wrong. Mm. So, really, I, I've had a very, very fortunate experience. Mm. And, and all I can do with anybody is try and share that with them. Mm. Look, this, this is a unique book. This book is the Word of God. Don't let anybody ever say anything to its detriment. If they do, don't believe them. Well, praise the Lord for your grandma. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Alec, final question. Um, people watching, um, you, you know, a senior in your Christian life, mm. is there anything that you would, if you could just have one thing to say to people that you'd love to communicate to them, uh, whether to encourage them in their Christian life well, or... To... What, what I would, if I could go back... Mm. Well, I... <clears throat> I was converted when I was 15, and that was in 1940. If I could go back to 1940, I would pursue holiness much more than I did. Alec, thank you so much. We're grateful for your time. We thank the Lord for your ministry, and we pray that it'll keep, keep on going, um, and especially through your books. We're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think there'll be any more. We'll see. <laughs>